In this lesson, we want to talk about solving exponential equations with like bases. So we just got done talking about exponential functions in general. And now the next topic is to discuss how we can solve exponential equations when you have like bases. So we're not going to involve kind of logarithms yet. We'll see that in a few lessons. So for now, we just want to use this rule to solve some problems. So if a to the power of x equals a to the power of y, then we can say x equals y. So what does this mean? Well, as long as a, this base here, is greater than 0 and it's not equal to 1, then basically if these bases are the same, meaning I have the same number here as I have here, well, then I can just set x equal to y and I can solve. So if you have the same base, then you're just going to set the exponents equal to each other and solve the resulting equation. So it's easy enough. Let's just kind of jump right in and look at an example. So we have 2 to the power of 5x minus 7 is equal to 64. So when you see problems like this, again, a lot of it is just making you kind of think through your properties of exponents. You should know at this point that 64 is 2 to the 6th power. If you didn't, always look at this number over here, the one that's kind of simpler. If you have something that's a prime number like 2 or 5 or 7, check to see if the number on the other side is divisible by that. So I know 64 is divisible by 2. If I set up a little factor tree, then I'm going to go through and find out that it's 2 to the 6th power. So what happens is I can now rewrite my problem and say this is 2 to the power of 5x minus 7. And this equals, instead of 64, I'm just going to write 2 to the 6th power. So now, through a little bit of manipulation, I have like bases. So I have 2 and I have a 2. So what I want to do now is just set these exponents equal to each other and solve. Very simple process. So 5x minus 7 is equal to 6. We're just going to add 7 to both sides of the equation. And of course, this is going to cancel, and I'll have 5x is equal to 13. Divide both sides by 5, and you get x is equal to 13 fifths. All right, so let's go ahead and look at another one. So we have 1 7th raised to the power of 6x equals 343. Again, if you're in this section, the idea here is that you're going to be able to rewrite things in such a way that you're going to have like bases. So 7 is a prime number, so that should be a little hint for you that, hey, is 343 divisible by 7? You check that on a calculator, it is. 343 divided by 7 is 49. Divided by 7 again, you get 7. So that tells me 343 is 7 cubed. So I know that on the right side, I could just say this is 7 cubed. Now on the left side, I don't have 7. I have 1 over 7. But again, here's where you got to use your rules of exponents. I know that 1 over 7 is equal to what? It's 7 to the power of negative 1. Remember that little rule. So the first thing I'm going to have to do, this is going to be two steps. I'm going to say that 1 over 7 is 7 to the power of negative 1, but then it's raised to the power of 6x. Now, what I want to do is I want to use my power to power rule, and I want to say, okay, if 7 is raised to the power of negative 1, and then it's raised to the power of 6x, the base here stays the same. I multiply exponents. So all this is going to be is negative 1 times 6x is my exponent, and that'll just be negative 6x. So most of the problem here is just setting things up, okay? After you've got that done, a lot of these are really, really simple equations to go through. So I'm going to set this equal to this and just solve it. You can almost do that mentally. So negative 6x equals 3. Divide both sides by negative 6, and we're going to get that x is equal to what? This cancels, and 3 over negative 6 is a half, and you've got that negative there, so it's negative 1 half as your answer. All right, let's look at one that involves a little bit more work. So we have 216 raised to the power of negative 4x plus 7 equals 36 raised to the power of 2x plus 1. So if I look at this now, neither of the bases are a prime number. So I've got to start to think in my head how I can relate these two. What would the like base be? Okay, so 36 I know off the top of my head is 6 times 6, right? So once I figure that out, then I can look at 216 and say, okay, is that divisible by 6? Yeah, 216 divided by 6 is 36. Well, then, okay, 216 is 6 cubed. So you're going to have 6 cubed, and then this is raised to the power of negative 4x plus 7. And this equals, you're going to have 6 squared, and this is raised to the power of 2x plus 1. So here's where people start to make mistakes. Make sure that this 3, when you do your power to power rule, gets multiplied by the whole thing. Make sure that 2 over here gets multiplied by the whole thing. So let me kind of break this down so you don't get lost. So power to power rule tells me that I'm going to multiply these two exponents. So 3 gets multiplied by this quantity. So 3 times the quantity, negative 4x plus 7. Make sure you use parentheses because if you don't, you're going to make a silly mistake. This equals 6 to the power of what? Use parentheses, 2 times the quantity, 2x plus 1. Okay, so once we've done this, now we're just going to simplify. 
I've got 6 to the power of 3 times negative 4x, which is negative 12x, and then plus 3 times 7 is 21. This is equal to 6 to the power of what? 2 times 2x is 4x, and then plus, you've got 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay, so we've done all that work to get it in the format where we can use our little rule. We've got 6 and we've got 6, so we've got like bases. So now what I want to do is just set my exponents equal to each other. So I'm going to take this one, set it equal to this one. Very simple. So negative 12x plus 21 equals 4x plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x away from both sides of the equation. And this is going to cancel. I'm going to subtract 21 away from both sides of the equation. And this is going to cancel. Let me get more room. So now what I'm going to have is negative 12x minus 4x, which is negative 16x. And this equals 2 minus 21, which is negative 19. To finish this up, let's divide both sides by negative 16. And let's just go ahead and cancel this out. And we'll say, I'll just write this up here, that x is equal to negative 19 over negative 16. That's just going to be 19 over 16, right? 19 is a prime number. So nothing you can really do to simplify there, unless you want to write it as a decimal. Okay, let's look at the next one. All right, now we have one that is a little bit more complicated. So each of these is kind of grown in complexity. So we have 32 raised to the power of 5 minus 3x times 64 raised to the power of negative 2x minus 1. And this equals 1 over 8. So if you look at 32, you look at 64, and you look at 8, you should be thinking immediately about a base of 2, right? Because 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the 6th power is 64, and 2 to the 5th power is 32. So if I just start with this 32 and say this is 2 to the 5th power then raised to this 5 minus 3x. And let's just go ahead and crank this out real quick. Again, power to power rule, this is going to get multiplied by each one of these. So remember, to do this, you would multiply with this guy in parentheses. So 5 times 5 is 25, and then 5 times negative 3x is minus 15x. So I'm just going to erase all of this and use this as my exponent. So 25 minus 15x. Okay, so this one, 64 is 2 to the 6th power. So 2 to the 6th power, again, this is raised to this guy, negative 2x minus 1. Power to power rule. 6 is going to get multiplied by each of these. So what I'm going to do, I'll just do this down here. You wrap this in parentheses. So 6 times the quantity negative 2x minus 1. This equals what? This is going to be 6 times negative 2x. That's negative 12x. And then 6 times negative 1 is minus 6. So let's go ahead and erase all of this. And I'll say this is to the power of negative 12x and then minus 6. Okay, so let's just stop for a minute. We'll figure out the right side in a moment. Remember our rule for kind of multiplying when exponents are involved. If I have a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is a to the power of m plus n. Well, it's the same thing here. I have like bases. I have a 2 and I have a 2. I'm multiplying. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is 2. Okay, this is 2 raised to the power of, I'm going to add these exponents together. So let me write this as plus negative 15x, and I'll say negative 15x minus 12x is negative 27x, and then I'm going to do 25 minus 6, which is 19, okay? So that takes care of that, and you can even erase this at this point. So this is the left side, as simple as we can make it. Now for the right side, I have 1 over 8, and remember, I can say this is 1 over 2 cubed, but we know that this is not 2. This is 1 over 2 cubed. Now, I want you to think about the fact that you could write 1 over 2 cubed using a negative exponent by saying this is 2 to the power of negative 3. Again, if you drag this into the denominator, everything stays the same. You just change the sign of the exponent. Okay, So that's our rule from earlier in the course. So I'm going to write this as 2 to the power of negative 3. And again, the main part here is just getting things set up. So now this is going to be equal to this because I do have like bases. So I would say negative 27x plus 19 equals negative 3. And then from here, let me scroll down and get a little room going, I would just subtract 19 away from each side of the equation, cancel this, and say negative 27x is equal to negative 22. Divide both sides by negative 27. And what's going to happen is this cancels with this, and I'll have x is equal to... I'll have 22 over 27. Because again, negative over negative is positive. If you think about 22, it's 11 times 2, and 27 is 3 cubed, so no way to really make that any simpler. All right, let's wrap up the lesson with one that seems kind of easy, but does trip up a lot of students. So we have 4 is equal to x to the power of 2 thirds. So you might also see this in this section, what in the world do you do to solve this? There's no way to really get like bases, right? Because this is 4 and this is x. 
So what you want to do here is think about this using kind of a radical notation that we learned earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and say this is x, and I want the cube root of that. And then this whole thing is going to be squared, and I'm going to set this equal to 4. Okay. So this is just another way to write the x to the power of 2 thirds. This is going to be what it's raised to, and this is going to be your index on your radical. Okay. So what can I do to clear this 2 up here? Well, I could take the square root of both sides. So I could take the square root of this side, and then over here, let me kind of slide this down. Remember, if you're taking the square root over here, over here you've got to go plus or minus the square root. So now I know this would cancel with this, and I'm just left with that. And so what I would have is just the cube root of x is equal to plus or minus 2. So let's erase this. Let's think about what this means. We have the cube root of x is equal to 2, or we have the cube root of x is equal to negative 2. So there's two scenarios. Now, what I can do from here is just cube both sides in each case to get rid of this kind of radical. So I'm going to do that over here as well. And what I'm going to find is that what? Well, here I just have x is equal to 8. And then over here I would have x is equal to negative 8. So I can simplify that and just say x is equal to plus or minus 8. And this is a good one to check because it's kind of one that you have to think about for a while. So if you plug in an 8 here, and I say, what is 8 to the power of 2 thirds? Well, let's think about that. What is the cube root? Let me make that better. What is the cube root of 8? Well, that's 2, right? And then if I square that, I'm going to get 4. So this becomes 2, and then if I square it, I get 4. So that one checks out. What if this was negative 8? Okay, what if it was negative 8? Well, what I would have is the cube root of negative 8, which is negative 2, and we would put parentheses here because this amount, this quantity of negative 2 would be squared, okay? And so we'd have negative 2 squared, and that would also give me 4. Okay, so keep in mind you have two solutions here. It would be x equals positive 8 and also x equals negative 8. And I'll just write that one more time. So x equals plus or minus 8.